Sing it, the weapon may be formed. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. Glory to God. And when the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Because the God I serve, because the God I serve knows only how to triumph. And my God, and my God will never fail. Sing it with me. Because I'm going to see a victory. Come on. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Come on, church. Because I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Because I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Because I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Because I'm going to see a victory. Glory to God. Our God is greater. Come on. And our God is greater. And our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. And our God is healer. He's awesome in power. Our God. Sing it with me, church. And our God is greater. And our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. And our God is healer. He's awesome in power. Our God. Our God is greater. And our God is greater. And our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. And our God is healer. He's awesome in power. Our God. Sing it with me if our God is for us this morning. And if our God is for us, who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, what could stand against? Come on. What could stand against? If our God, and if our God is for us, who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, what could stand against? What could stand against? Oh Lord, if our God, if our God is for us, who could ever stop us? If our God is with us, what could stand against? Father God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, me and Pastor Amy, we lift your wonderful people up before you on this morning. Lord, we pray that you minister to them. We pray that you touch them. We pray that you strengthen them. Bring clarity and direction into their lives. Feed them through the Word of God. Let the Word of God come alive to them. You said, my sheep know my voice. And a stranger, they will not follow, but will flee from him. Lord, have your way through this broadcast on this morning. Let the Holy Ghost say something through this broadcast this morning that will cause your people to have an encounter with the resurrected Jesus Christ. Change their lives and their situations forever, God. In Jesus' name we pray, somebody say amen. Praise God. We continue our series on this morning. God is fighting for you. And on this morning, we're talking about winning with less. Sometimes in our lives, God has to do more with less. Are you listening to me? You got to move the wrong people out of your life. You got to take the wrong things out of your life and do a work in us so God alone can get the glory. 
Are you listening to me? This brings us to the book of Judges chapter 7, beginning at verse 1. Then Jeroboam, who is Gideon, and all the people that were with him rose up early and pitched beside the well of Herod, so that the host of the Midianites were on the north side of them by the hill of Morah in the valley. And now you got to understand what's happening here. First and foremost, Gideon, when the angel appeared to him and called him a mighty man of valor, Gideon was looking around. Gideon said, I wonder who he's talking to. <laughs> God had to build this man up and give him the confidence for him to lead. Gideon did not even believe in himself. It's amazing. God uses the weak things of this world to confound the wise and the strong. And now he's finally built up to that place where he can lead. And the Lord said, and so Gideon, Gideon begins to call all of the people around from the nation who wanted to be a part of his military so they can fight against the Midianites because the children of Israel, they were in poverty because of the Midianites, because the Midianites suppressed them and oppressed them and took advantage of them. And Gideon said, I'm tired of this. Where be all his miracles that our fathers told us of? And Gideon began to seek God, and that's why he had a visitation from God by sending the angel to him. And now Gideon has the guts, and he's beginning to lead, and he's feeling good about himself. He has he has an army of about 32,000 people who have gathered around him. And the Bible says, and the Lord said unto Gideon, the people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands. Lest Israel vaunt themselves against me saying, our own hand, my own hand has saved me. Now, wait a minute, God. The Midianites look like sand on the seashore, so many of them. They have a million, I mean, a million man army strong or more. And I only got 33,000, I mean 32,000. And you telling me I got too much. Did your calculator broke on you this morning, God? I mean, can you imagine what's going through Gideon's head? But God doesn't always do it the way we want him to do it. The Bible says, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are his ways higher than our ways. This is why we got to trust him. Are you listening to me? You got to trust him. Watch this, y'all. Now... Therefore, go to proclaiming the heirs of the people, saying, Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead. And their return of the people, 20 and 2,000, 22,000 people, and there remain 10,000. Lord, have mercy. There remain 10,000. This man started with 33,000, and in one day, God didn't strip his army from 32,000 down to only 10,000. I would have started getting concerned. <laughs> Come on. You don't need as much as you think you need to win, the, to win the battle, to win the victory. Are you listening to me? And the Lord said unto Gideon, the people are yet too many. Bring them down unto the water and I will try them. God said, I'm going to try them for thee there. And it shall be that of whom I say unto thee, this shall go with thee, the same shall go with thee. And of whomsoever I say unto thee, this shall not go with thee, the same shall not go. So God's telling Gideon, those people that are around you, I'm going to check them out myself. I'm going to test them myself. I'm going to make it plain who is for you and who's against you. I'm going to make it plain who should go and who should stay. Watch this. Verse 5. So he brought down the people unto the water. And the Lord said unto Gideon, Everyone that lappeth of the water with his tongue as a dog lappeth, him shall thou set by himself. Likewise, everyone that boweth down upon his knees to drink. 
<laughs> and the number of them that left putting their hand to their mouth were 300 men. But all the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees to drink water. God's telling Gideon, pay attention to the ones who look real hungry, who grab in the water like, like a dog does, come on, and who can still pay attention to their surroundings. But be afraid of anyone who bend down and all they're doing is they consuming themselves in their own need. They so hungry, all they know about is their stomach to the point that they will not have your back in the midst of war. And guess what? Gideon army went from 32,000 to 300. 31,700 were too carnal and fleshly and were no good. God says, send them out of here. They will cost you lose. But if I only need 300, I don't need, come on somebody. God said, I only need these 300 right here. Now we know in other places in scripture, God told Joshua, You've got to take all the men of war with you, which were thousands. But you've got to understand, God have a winning strategy for every battle. Not every battle is the same. And every battle requires you to trust God, lean on him, and depend on him. You got to be hearing from God because without hearing from God, you are going to lose. Are you listening to me? Watch this. So the Lord said unto Gideon, by the 300 men that lap water like a dog will I save you and deliver the Midianites into your hand and let all the other people go every man unto his place. I'm talking to somebody. God is stripping you. God is cutting and taking people out of your life. He's removing bad people out of your life. That's what Jesus said in John 15. I am the husbandman. Wait, wait, give me one second. I got to pull it up. I want to read that for a second because that's some goodies right there. I tell you what, hold, hold on one second. I've got to read that. I've been thinking about this scripture for the last several days. John 15, 1, Jesus said, I am the true vine and my father is the husbandman. He's the gardener in charge. Every branch in me that bear it not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that bears fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. So sometimes God got to purge us. He's got to prune us. Why? So we can bring forth more fruit. When God begins to prune you, it's not a bad sign. God is pruning you because you are a producer. God is pruning you because you are productive. I like productive people. I love people who can produce. You can put it in their hands and it increases and it multiplies. I love people who can produce and so does God because he prunes everyone that is producing. So if God is cutting and removing people out of your life, it doesn't mean that something is wrong with you. It means that something is right with you. It means that you are a producer. You are productive and God got to prune these wrong people out of your life so that you can produce more fruit. Are you listening to me? And then later in the same chapter of John 15, Jesus said, in this is my father glorified that you bear much fruit. Are you listening? So you go from bearing fruit to be bearing more fruit to bearing much fruit. So Jesus is trying to get you to bear much fruit because he said, in this is my father glorified that you bear much fruit and so shall you be my disciples. So he began to prune, he began to prune Gideon's bushes. He began to prune Gideon's tree, prune his life, move all those bad people out. That's a whole lot of bad folk. 31,700. God said you only need 300. With this handful of people, I'm going to take you to battle and you're going to wipe out an army of over a million men. You know that can only be God talking. Because if that was a man talking to me, I'd look at him like he'd been done overdose on something. You understand what I'm talking about. Now watch this. So the people, glory to God. I don't know about you, but I love my Bible. <laughs> you know why I say these things so you can get the picture. You know what I'm saying. Lord have mercy. So the people took victuals in their hands 
and their trumpets, their lanterns is what that is. And he sent all the rest of Israel, every man unto his tent, and retained those 300 men. And the host of Midian was beneath him in the valley. And it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, Arise, get thee, that, get thee down unto the host, for I have delivered it into thy hand. But if thou fare to go down, go thou with Pura, thy servant, down to the host. And thou shalt hear what they say, and afterwards shall thy hands be strengthened to go down unto the host. Then went he down with Pura, his servant, unto the host of the armed men that were in the host. So God is telling Gideon, Gideon, I know you need confirmation again. But it's okay. And the reason why God works with us, I don't know about you, but there are certain things God asked me to do. I need confirmation. I mean, clear cut. I need to know like I know like I know it's God. And Gideon was in that place. And even though God had given him several confirmations, he just needed one more to just bring his faith to the point where he would be willing to act. Are you hearing me? So God said, go down to the enemy's camp. I'm going to make the, I'm going to give the enemy a dream that's going to encourage you. Law, only God, man, only God, Lord have mercy. And the Midianites and the Malachites and all the children of the east lay along in the valley like grasshoppers for multitude. And their camels were without number as the sand by the seaside for multitude. They were by the millions. That's how big that army was. And God is telling Gideon, yeah, your 300 men is going to cut down all of those people. My, my, my. And when Gideon was come, behold, there was a man. Watch this now. Him and Pura, his servant, they snuck into the enemy's camp at night. And they right there by one of the tent. And listen to what, what's happening. And when Gideon was come, behold, there was a man that told a dream unto his fellow and said, Behold, I dreamed a dream, and lo, a cake of barley bread tumbled into the host of Midian and came unto a tent and smote it that it fell and overturned it that the tent lay along. Now this is what the, the Holy Ghost is giving the enemy a dream and the Holy Ghost is about to give the enemy the interpretation and watch what they say. The other guy said, and his fellow answered and said, this is nothing else save the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash, a man of Israel for into his hand hath God delivered Midian and all the hosts. The enemy knows you coming to kick their backside. Are you listening to me? I'm telling you, who am I talking to this morning? The word is in the enemy's camp that you about to get the victory. There ain't nothing they can do about it. They having dreams about you getting the victory. God is going to give you the victory without a shadow of a doubt. The word is out. My, 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 my. You about to win with less. Winning with less is what we're talking about this morning. I said, you're about to win with less. My, my. And it was so when Gideon heard the telling of the dream. I don't know about you, but I'd be encouraged too. And it was so when Gideon heard the telling of the dream and the interpretation thereof that he worshiped and returned into the host of Israel and said, Arise, for the Lord has delivered into your hand the host of Midian. This, I love God because God takes his time and works with you and works with you and bring you to the place where you are full of faith and confidence, where you can act. And that's where Gideon was. And he divided the 300 men into three companies and he put a trumpet in every man's hand with empty pitchers and lamps within the pitchers. And he said unto them, Look on me and do likewise. And behold, when I come to the outside of the camp, it shall be that as I do, shall you do. When I blow with a trumpet, I and all that are with me, then blow ye the trumpets also on every side of all the camp and say the sword of the Lord. And of Gideon. So Gideon and the 300 men that were with him came under the, under the outside of the camp in the beginning of the middle watch. 
and they had been newly set the watch and they blew the trumpets and break the pitchers that were in their hands and the three companies blew the trumpets and break the pitchers and held the lamps in their left hands and the trumpets in their right hands to blow with all and they cried the sword of the lord and of gideon that 300 those 300 men sounded like an army my god and they stood every man in his place round about the camp and all the hosts can you imagine just suddenly they heard a loud shout and the breaking of Gideon and his men lanterns. It looked like they were being trampled by an army twice their size. The Bible said all the hosts, they ran, they cried, and they fled. They went into a, all a panic. Lord have mercy. I said they went into a panic. They, they ran, they cried, and they fled. The Bible says, submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Gideon and his men resisted the devil, and the enemy fled. God gave Gideon the victory with less, and the 300 blew the trumpets, and the Lord said, every man saw it against his fellow, even through all the hosts, and the host fled. The enemies turned on one another. The enemy began to fight one another. The enemy began to slaughter one another. And they were defeated. God gave Gideon an outstanding victory. God gave Gideon a mighty victory. God gave Gideon a great victory. My God, you're about to win with less. You are about to win with less. God is giving you the victory. God is stepping in to fight for you. It looked bad, but God is going to make the thing work together for good because you love God and you are called according to his purpose. Somebody give God praise. Listen, I want to give you an opportunity to support the preaching of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are preaching the gospel. This is the most important work on the face of the earth. So I'm asking you, don't just watch, don't just eat the word up and enjoy it, but support the work of God. And many of you are, but I'm just saying, we need you more than ever to continue giving. Don't pull back. This ain't the time to pull back. Souls are being saved. Sick bodies are being healed. Marriages are being restored. Broken lives are being restored. To give and support the work of God, you can visit us online right now at seanpinder.net forward slash give. You can also give through the ministry PayPal account. That address is paypal.me forward slash Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also give through the ministry Zell account. The ministry Zell email address is info at seanpinder.net. You can also give through the ministry cash app account. The ministry cash app address is the dollar sign Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also text to give. All you have to do is text the letters SPM to the number 45888 and a link will automatically be sent to you. You can also mail your donations into the ministry. Just remember to make your checks and money orders out to Sean Pinder Ministries, P.O. Box 2726, McKinney, Texas, 75070. Never forget me and Pastor Amy, we love you. We appreciate you so much. We'll never take you for granted. God bless you. We invite you to join our new church, Miracle Healing Center, on Sundays at 10 a.m. at the Cockrell Middle School in McKinney, Texas, with Pastor Sean and Amy Pinder. We welcome people of all ages and backgrounds to come and experience God's love and power, as well as join us as we fulfill the Great Commission, preaching the gospel to the lost and demonstrating God's power. Plan your visit today. Visit MiracleHealingCenter.net. We can't wait to meet you. 
from the author of Seven Ways the Holy Spirit Speaks comes an inspiring new book about living an undefeated life through Christ. The harder the battle, the sweeter the victory. Combining biblical insight and real world experience, Pastor Sean Pinner unpacks practical truths and encouragements that will prepare you for your next battle and help you win the one you are currently in. Somebody shout! The harder the battle, the sweeter the victory! Warfare is an inevitable aspect of any Christian life, but the fight you face does not have to destroy you. You cannot avoid your battles, but you can make the most of them. Learn how to approach your battles correctly and gain peace, understanding, strength, and ultimate victory. Order The Harder the Battle, The Sweeter the Victory today. Available on Amazon and all major book suppliers. Don't merely survive your battles, learn how to thrive. It's here, the book we've been waiting for. Seven Ways the Holy Spirit Speaks to Us. A complete guide to hearing God. Pastor Sean Pinner gives readers life-changing keys on exploring, understanding, and experiencing the voice of God, which every believer can hear on a daily basis. Packed with powerful revelations, this book shares the methods, means, and motivations for the voice of God, and provide answers to questions like how to hear God, recognize His voice, tap into His guidance, and much more. Receive confidence on hearing God through the Word, dreams and visions, divine impressions, and more. And discover a much deeper and more intimate walk with the Lord. Order Seven Ways the Holy Spirit Speaks Today, available on Amazon and all major book suppliers. Your journey into the powerful realms of God's voice starts here.